Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com. A few videos back, I experimented with a range of extreme cooling solutions for a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and they included things like fitting a small heatsink, but also a rather large Noctua fan. And the results were pretty good, the temperature of the Pi came down considerably, and many of you said in the comments, Chris, now that you've done this, you must overclock your Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. And so, in this video, I'm going to do just that. So, here we have our Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus in the cooling rig I first put together a few videos back. And before we try some overclocking, it's worth mentioning that while the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus is rated at 1.4 GHz, it actually runs at many different speeds. So, for a start, when it's idling along, it runs at 600 MHz, and then at load, it operates at its turbo speed of 1.4 GHz. However, if the system on a chip heats up to 70 degrees, a mid-level throttle cuts in to reduce the turbo speed to 1.2 GHz. And then, if the system on a chip heats up even more to somewhere over 80 degrees, it throttles back significantly to prevent damage to the chip. And what all of this means is that overclocking a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus is all about increasing its turbo speed beyond 1.4 GHz, while keeping its temperature below 70 degrees to stop any throttling. And this is why if you're overclocking a Raspberry Pi, you should really do it with some sort of cooling rig in place like the one I've got here. And as I proved a few videos back, this rig with a small heatsink and a Noctua fan will stabilize the temperature of a non-overclocked Raspberry Pi 3B Plus to about 47 degrees. So we should be relatively safe overclocking using this rig. That said, I must stress in this video very clearly that overclocking can damage your Pi. You can destroy a Raspberry Pi by trying overclocking. So please only try what you see here at your own risk. But now with that very long preamble out of the way, it's now time to boot up our Raspberry Pi. So, here we are on the Raspberry Pi's desktop, where as you can see, I've written a quick bash script, which we're gonna be using in this video. And what this does after clearing the screen, just to be tidy, is it will report on the frequency of the Raspberry Pi's processor and take a temperature measurement. And I would point out that because the Pi is sitting here idling along initially, I would expect that initial uh, frequency uh, report to be 600 megahertz. And because of that, what I then do is to run Sysbench. This is the routine I often use to stress out the Pi. And this is a very quick Sysbench test. It'll uh, factor prime numbered up to a value of 1000, but that should force the Pi up to its turbo speed, which will be 1.4 gigahertz for a non overclocked Pi, and then it'll report on the frequency again just to prove that. So we, should, we should see initially the Pi is running at 600 megahertz, and then it'll be up to 1.4 gigahertz. I'm then going to run a Sysbench test to really stress the thing out over a period of time. This will actually factor prime numbers up to 50,000 value, which is quite a reasonable number. That'll take, I imagine, around five minutes or so to run on a non-overclocked Pi. And then finally, at the end, it'll give us a value for the, the uh, speed. We can check it was running at full speed all the way through, uh, or at least start in the end, we have to assume in the middle, and it'll also show us a final temperature. I would point out that in my second Sysbench run, I've taken off the end of it the syntax I sometimes use, which is this up here. This I often include because it suppresses the output to the uh, terminal of Sysbench, so we don't get lots of stuff coming up on the screen. But in the second test, I thought we wanted that. Not least, it'll show us the time taken to run the test, which we can compare for the non-overclock pi and the overclock pi. Anyway, hopefully that is all clear. So we'll flick over to the, the terminal where I've got that ready, and we'll run that code. And it'll show us, as you see, running at 600 megahertz initially. That was the temperature. That's not bad as an idle temperature with this system. Sysbench then kicked in. And as you can see, the Pi speed rose to 1.4 gigahertz. So it'll now take a while for Sysbench to complete. So we'll flick into fast forward mode. And there we are, it's finished. And as you can see, it took, uh, what is that? Uh, 292 seconds, just under five minutes to complete the test. So this gives us a speed benchmark we can compare with the overclock pi in a second. And as you can see, the temperature ended up at 45.1 degrees. It's slightly cool today when I did my last test with this test rig. That's a very good temperature having run for five minutes on the Sysbench test. So here we are back again, and I'm now about to implement our overclock. And to do that, I need to edit the pi's config.txt file. 
And you can do that in any editor you like. I'm going to use Idle because I happen to like using Idle. I've got some nice fonts set up on the screen so you can see it clearly. But because we're going to edit the config text file, we need to have full access. We have root access to this file. So I'm going to run Idle in the root mode by typing sudo idle. There we are. It'll bring it up. Uh, I know you normally uh, use, uh, use Idle to write Python scripts, but you can use it to open and edit any type of text file you like. So I'll go to open and we'll look for all files and we'll uh, go up and look in boot and we'll roll along and we'll find config.txt and we'll uh, open that up. There we are. This is the file that Pi executes when it first boots. And if we scroll down here, you'll see there's already a comment about overclocking some stuff there. Although admittedly, this is based on earlier Pi's with a much lower speed. Now, before I actually change this file, I'm going to be safe and keep a copy. So I'm going to go to File and uh, Save As. And we'll save this as a config um, underscore old, just to keep that copy there. And we'll just say that again. There's loads of ways to make a copy. This is a quick way, or a relatively quick way. We've now got config old there as well as config text. So we could go back to that. If overclocking goes wrong, you'll have to go back to your previous settings by either editing this file, restoring an old file. You might have to do that on a PC other than the Pi, on another computer, if you can't get your Pi to boot at all. But we'll hope that won't happen. Anyway, let's now put in uh, our code. And I'm going to do a fairly conservative overclock initially. So I'm going to go to arm, uh, frec, arm, arm, Frequency, let's type it correctly, Chris. I'm making a mess of this, aren't I, today? And we're going to take it to 1450, just up a little bit from 1400. Now, to make that work, I'm going to give it a little bit more voltage. There's a command here called over voltage like that. And you can give that a value. The default value is zero, which means nothing happens at all. And then every number you give it up to six adds 0 0.025 volts to the pi's voltage. This is where you start to get a bit dangerous because you are forcing the, the process not just to run faster but at a higher voltage to keep it stable at a higher frequency. I'm going to use over voltage 2 here which will take our Pi to 1.25 volts. Um, I've actually seen various things around that say you don't need to do the over voltage stuff so much with a Pi 3B plus because it's got a power management system that will adjust this voltage for you. I'm not sure about that. I can't find absolutely definitive information. So I'm going to try this. Frequency 1450 over voltage 2. So we will save that. Our overclock is now set up. We can get rid of this and that and all that stuff. And we now need to reboot our Pi and see if it's going to work. So I'll uh, reboot the Pi. And uh, there we are. And here we are back on our desktop. So we can now go back to our uh, where we were before, which is Python code. Why have I got my bash scripts in Python code? I don't know. It keeps me happy. As long as it keeps me happy, that's all right, isn't it? And there's our overclock test script. So let's run that and see what happens. Uh, initially, is at 600 megahertz. Yes, it's got up to its uh, 1450. So it is running a bit faster. So we'll now let this run through in fast forward and see how long it takes to complete the test. And there we are, it's finished. Uh, it seems to have maintained its uh, speed at a 1450. Uh, it's not done too bad on temperature, 46.7 versus what, 45.1. And most significantly, it is of course quicker. It saved us just over four seconds, which is a bit of time. We've proved we can run our Pi faster. I think if it can survive that suspense test for five minutes or just under five minutes, it clearly is stable. So let's see if we can do a bit better than that. Let's do pseudo idle again. And we'll go back and try a more uh, radical overclock because that's the kind of radical people we are, isn't it? We're radical people today. Well, maybe anyway, maybe slightly radical. Um, we'll go back to this. I'm now going to try, say, um, 1500. Let's take it to a whole uh, 100 megahertz. I'm going to over voltage it up to, say, I'm going to try six of that. I'll take it to the maximum because I think it might be worth uh, trying that on that. And uh, I'm also here, I think, going to also increase the GPU frequency, which is normally 400 megahertz. I'm going to go to GPU and uh, frequency again. And that's, oh, what should we try? Let's try 500. Let's really do something significant. So we've got a decent overclock of the GPU, a reasonable overclock of, of the CPU, over voltage at six. Let's see if that works. So we will uh, save that. And uh, once again, we will... Uh, Reboot our Pi. Yes, I could reboot in the terminal, couldn't I, thinking about it, but hey, I like rebooting this way. And uh, here it goes again. Oh, it's nice watching a Pi rebooting, isn't it, with its lovely 
colourful screens and things, but once again, we'll fast forward through. And uh, here we are again, and uh, the CD Python code must be there, as must the uh, overclock test. Let's run it again. Yes, it's got up to its um, 1.5 gigahertz, and once again, we'll wait and see how long it takes to complete the test. And there we are, it's finished again, uh, this time what, uh, 277 seconds, so that's down from what, 292 when we first started, we're saving more and more little bits of time here, and again the temperature isn't too bad, there's no indication this thing is throttling, what, 47.8, I think this is showing how good our Noctua rig is with its small heatsink and this large fan, it really works well for overclocking purposes. So shall we try and be even more radical, let's just go in and uh, um, implement, of course, uh, something even faster. Here we are back again. I will now try uh, maybe 155. This is getting rather fast for a Pi 3 uh, B+. One thing to remember, of course, is that a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus is really already an overclocked Raspberry Pi uh, 3. The original Raspberry Pi 3 ran at 1.2 gigahertz. This runs at 1.4 or stock speed at 1.4 purely because it's got better thermal management. So anything we get in overclock here is a real benefit. But let's try that at 1.55. I say that's going uh, rather, rather radical. But um, we will have a C. Let's just a flick through and get that running. And uh, here we are raring to go. And yes, as we can see, it is now running at 1.55 gigahertz. So let's let it complete this test. And there we are. It's remained stable again. Uh, we've got through suspension or 268 seconds. This is now getting significantly different from the 292 we started with. Temperature still not too bad at 48.3 degrees C. But of course, you all want to know, can I reach that magical 1.6, which seems to be the figure everyone gets stuck at. So let's have a final go at that. We'll just go back into idle. I'll set it up quickly. And uh, we'll put in those magic numbers, uh, 1.6 gigahertz, 1600 megahertz. Let's uh, see if this is going to work. Well, uh, so far so good. We seem to be uh, booting. I'll keep talking through this because of course this might not work at all, but um, no, this doesn't look very uh, hopeful. We'll leave it a second. No, this is not hopeful at all. I think black screen is all we're gonna get. The Pi is not going to boot at 1.6 gigahertz. So what I need to do is to now go to another PC and to flick the uh, config uh, old file back to in the config text file. And by the magic of filmmaking, uh, here we are back on the Pi some, some time later. That's all now been sorted out. If I just show you that, if we go back to the Pi's uh, um, boot directory, which uh, you up here, so we're losing the boot directory, never mind. And there we are. I, I changed the uh, config uh, file I had to config overclock. The one I was trying with 1.6 gigahertz didn't work and config.txt is now set back to be the one that has uh, no overclocking going on at all. We're just back to where we started. So um, you'll see if I go back to uh, here, just to prove we are where we are, um, let's go back into there. Let's just run that thing again. Uh, you will see that uh, we're now back to running at uh, 1.4 gigahertz and everything is running perfectly well. So there we are. We proved we can take a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus with some decent cooling on it to uh, 1.55 gigahertz. The cooling clearly ceased to be the constraint beyond that. It was more the Pi couldn't remain stable, but still 1.55 gigahertz is a very good overclock on a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. So there we have it. We've managed to get some extra performance out of a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, and we haven't blown it up in the process. Do please remember that overclocking can damage your Pi though, so please don't try what you've seen here unless you accept it's at your own risk. But now that is it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.